So now there are two essential factors that this contraption understands the relationship between. The relationship between where I am and where I want to be. Simple, isn't it? So your emotional guidance system works the same way. It gives you vibrational feedback that helps you know the vibrational relationship between where you are and where you want to be. The better you feel, the better that relationship. The worse you feel, the worse that relationship. So if you want more money and you are discouraged, that emotion of discouragement is saying to you, your vibrational relationship between where you want to be and where you are is not in a place of improvement. This discouragement is your indication that you've got to find a different way of looking at it. You've got to find a way of affecting this emotion. Your emotions come to you in response to your thoughts. You think a thought and then you have an emotional response. Your emotions in and of themselves do not have power. It's just your guidance system letting you know how you are utilizing your power. The better you feel, the more in alignment you are. Now there's another piece to this that we really want you to hear. It's new for most of you and it will answer many questions for those of you who have been playing with this for a while. You are creative genius, we've already told you that. And you are worthy beings, you are God in physical bodies and we tell you that we know that we don't feel you hear it in the way we mean it you have taught yourselves to be so humble it's hard for you to accept that you really are leading edge God force but you are so as you are here in these physical bodies and you are exploring contrast and preferences are born within you this new preference that is unique to you that is born in this moment is this leading edge summoning thing. In other words, do you get how when you ask it is given and do you understand that you don't have to ask with your words? That the experience just causes you to prefer or want and that wanting is a vibration that calls unto you. So here you are out here on the leading edge having new experiences calling source energy unto you and source is enjoying the expansion as it happens through your unique perspective do you get that can you feel how important that is so here's the new part that we really want you to hear so contrast causes you to emit a rocket of desire and in the moment that you do source all that is God whatever you want to call this universal life force follows the trail of the rocket so in the moment that your life experience has caused you to prefer something source energy goes with it now we want that to validate you we want you to understand the perfection and the uniqueness of your experience in other words you are so important and you are so capable and worthy of discerning your let's find another way even the one celled amoeba in the ocean is having an experience that causes it to prefer all of the cells in your body are having experiences that are causing them to prefer so as these preferences are happening the universe is expanding and you are in on it big time so Source energy rides your rocket. So now, getting back to this subject of vibrational relativity. Contrast caused you to prefer something. The preference was born. It shot out of you. Source energy followed it. So now you have, if you're feeling and if you're paying attention, you have this guidance system that is showing you the vibrational relativity between where you are right now and what you think mostly about the subject and what you want and the perspective that source energy now has that it received from your or experience of expansion when Jerry and Esther program Magellan to a new destination and then they take their own personal side trip Magellan says please return to the highlighted route please return to the highlighted route if they deviate far she will say when possible make a legal u-turn because she it's a woman's voice. The man's voice was too bossy. 
She understands the vibrational relationship between where they said they want to go and where they seem to be going. She can tell that they're off their path. And your guidance system is the same way. When you say, whether you use words or not, when your experience causes you to desire more money and you're complaining about ha not having enough money, that discouragement that you feel is your personal Magellan saying, please return to the highlighted route. Please return to the highlighted route. Please try to find a way of looking at this that feels a little better than the way that you have found to look at it because the way you have found to look at it has got you going in the wrong direction. The way you found to look at it has caused you to activate a vibration that is preventing you from receiving the very thing you're asking for. That's what negative emotion always means. You can't get to where you want to be and feel bad at the same time. Your guidance is telling you you're off your track. Now, there are so many physical humans who believe that it is through their action that they make things happen. But you cannot buck the current of your own vibration. Don't you know people or even yourself sometimes when you're beating this drum about something and it's just the way you feel and no matter how hard you try, no matter how much effort or energy or even money you put into something, you just can't buck your own current because the universe is not responding to your activity, to your action. The universe is responding to your vibration. Jerry and Esther bought this magnificent new monster bus and they've had two wonderful coaches before this one. And when they picked it up, it was perfect in nearly every way. But one day when they went to leave, they couldn't get out. The door was jammed. And they called. They were still at the plant where it was manufactured. And they called and a nice man came. He couldn't make it open either. So they opened the emergency window and he got a ladder and he climbed in. And then from inside, he disassembled the door and uh, monkeyed around with it. Literally, a monkey could have done it because he had no idea what he was doing. He just fiddled and jiggled and fiddled and jiggled until something broke loose and they were able to get out. And then he said, whatever you did that caused that, don't ever do it again. And Jerry and Esther said, we have no idea what we did that caused that. And he said, well, we do not know what caused it either. It's the first time that this has happened to us, and so don't do it again. And Esther said, what happens if it happens when we are on the outside? We know what to do now when we're on the inside. We can take the door apart and fiddle and wiggle and fiddle and wiggle and fiddle and wiggle. But what happens if we are outside? And he said, well, then you've got a big problem. <laughs> And so several people looked at it. No one could figure out what the problem was about it. And Jerry and Esther knew, though. They knew that the first coach they had, the door never lined up right. And so they bought another one because the door never lined up right. And then the second coach, the door never lined up right. It was hard to close. It was hard to open. It rattled when they drove. So no problem. We'll just buy the most expensive contraption that's ever been made on the face of the earth and we'll leave behind our old rattling not good fitting doors well that may work if you could go somewhere into the future without taking yourself with you but when you take the vibration of your being with you in other words they did expect the door to be better and it is better it just locks them in and locks them out. It has electronic contraptions that they do not dare use. There's a mechanism that makes the deadbolt lock and there's a that goes this way inside and there's a mechanism that causes the door to open that goes this way and somehow those two are colliding and jamming. And so Jerry and Esther promised one another that they would not use the electronic contraptions. They took them off, hid them far away and they used the big old key to lock the door because it feels safe. And the man at the plant who gave them the orientation was appalled that they could spend this much money on a motor coach and have a defect that is that significant. And Esther said, it's not your fault. The universe always gives us what's active in our vibration. He thinks she's crazy. But Esther was letting them off the hook. She said, we had, we've had problems with all of the doors in all of our coaches and that's why we're having problems with this door he didn't get it but Esther gets it in other words she knows that you cannot cover your vibration with action you have to offer a vibration that matches what you want so 
the way we like to explain this to you is you have two journeys that are moving along here together. One is your action journey, and your action journey is what's culminated so far. In other words, that's what is. That's where you're at right now. That's the result of what you've been thinking. It's the result of what you've activated. It's your point of attraction in its manifested form. And then, running concurrently with this action journey is an emotional journey. And the emotional journey is how I feel about the things I give my attention to. We were talking with a woman not long ago who has arthritis in her hips and she was complaining, not strong, but looking for resolution. She said, how can I not notice that my hips hurt all the time? Sitting, standing, walking, lying in bed, my hips hurt. How can I not notice that they hurt and therefore create more of the same? And we said, you have to find a way of separating the action journey or what is from the way you're thinking and feeling about it. We said, can you feel the difference between having arthritis in your hips and feeling fear and having arthritis in your hips and feeling hope? Because the vibrational difference between fear and hope is tremendous, you see. And if you can feel hopeful while you have arthritis in your hips, just for a little while, the arthritis in your hips must start to dissipate because the vibration of hopeful and the vibration of believing is such that the sickness or disease of arthritis cannot exist in the same space. Can you hear that? Diseases, as they exist, have vibrational relevance. In other words, different diseases have different vibrational characteristics. And without meaning to, you go to work, you've got some ornery person you work with, they just drive you nuts for years, and you train yourself into a vibration that causes all kinds of things to occur in your experience because you are activating a vibration. And then you say, if you're like most people, that person needs to be different. Because if that person were not the way they are, I would have a different response to them. And if I had a different response to them, I'd feel better and my body wouldn't be sick. And we say, but if you need that person to do something different, you're in a world of trouble because that person is not really all that interested in making your world perfect. That person is interested in doing whatever they can for their own world. Everyone is selfishly wired. You only have the perspective of self, you see. You cannot see through anyone else's eyes. So when you say, I need that condition to change before I can feel better, it is true entrapment for yourself because if you, even if you could be strong enough or coercive enough or dominant enough that you could force someone or influence someone to a different offering of conditions. There will be another and another and another and another and another. You cannot control the way you feel by attempting to control the circumstances that surround you. It will make you crazy. It's far too big. It's not possible for you to do it and it's not your right anyway. In other words, everyone has the freedom to create in their own experience. You've got to let them create in their own experience. You've just got to find a way to feel different about what you see them creating. That's what the art of allowing is. Allowing your connection to source no matter what you're seeing around you. At first this is troubling to people because they will say, hey Abraham, you mean I should just be a doormat and just lay down and let people walk all over me, let them have their way? And we say, no, far from that. You're going to train yourself into a different vibrational response. And when you train yourself into a different vibrational response, your vibrational output will be different. Your point of attraction will be different. And those people will not be able to find their way into your experience. You say, what about family? What about those that I go see? We say, well, that's up to you. In other words, you can take yourself and through your action walk into all kinds of situations. But when you become aware of your point of attraction and you care about the way you feel so you're tending to your point of attraction, your world is just going to get better and better and better and better and better. When you beat the drum of things you appreciate, when you make lists of positive aspects, when you look at someone who has 10 characteristics and eight of them are obnoxious and two of them are pretty nice and you focus upon the two that you adore and you activate within yourself that part of them, that's the part of them that law of attraction is going to line up with you. The other parts that aren't active in your vibration cannot come to you. 
Anything that's coming to you is active in your vibration. If it's happening to you, it's active in your vibration.